Hello, it's Peter Bradshaw here again from The Guardian, here to tell you that online film review work, like sex work, is work. But hopefully that doesn't apply to the experience of being you know, on the receiving end, in both cases, I guess. Do you know what? Let's forget about that analogy. This week we are, in such a real sense, looking at the commercial sex experience in two separate films. And the first is the rather excellent Good Luck to You, Leo Grand, written by Katie Brand and directed by Sophie Hyde, with Emma Thompson on career best form as Nancy, the middle-aged widow and retired schoolteacher who pays for sex with Leo Grand, played by Daryl McCormack, on a mission to have her first ever orgasm. I'm Leo, you must be Nancy. May I come inside? Yes. So I've made a list of things that I'd like to get through. Number one, uh, I perform oral sex on you. Number two, you perform oral sex on me. Number three, we do a 69, if that's what it's still called. Um, four, me on top. Five, doggy style. Well, that all sounds very achievable. Have I booked enough time? You, you want to do it all today? <laughs> yes, no. Really good performances from them both, perhaps especially Emma Thompson, a cousin of sorts to her nurse in The Tall Guy who goes out with Jeff Goldblum, and the woman in love, actually, who cries in the bathroom because Alan Rickman is cheating on her. She has hired Leo Grand to make her late-life dreams come true, and until recently, the term escort is what you said if you wanted to avoid the P word, but of course, the coolly professional Leo uses the contemporary acceptable term sex worker. Leo has the smilingly indulgent manner of a therapist who has seen it all, or a concierge at a luxury boutique hotel who can get you anything you like. Nancy actually says to him, you're some sort of sex saint, are you real? And we indeed might wonder the same thing. Just as the customer in the bought sex transaction has the power and the capital, so Nancy is the one with the wealth of backstory. And Leo seems weirdly blank, like some sort of complacent Stepfordian robot. We wait and wait for his smiley, accommodating manner to crack, and crack it duly does. But the film refuses the traditional moralistic assertion of squalor or tragedy. It shows that, rightly or wrongly, people selling sex can and do remain happy. The film is at its best as it shows Nancy's inhibitions beginning to evaporate, her personal and sexual inhibitions. She gradually abandons the need to confess, to apologise, to abase herself before Leo, and her school teacherly mannerisms rise to the surface. She becomes bossier and more reactionary, and it is her incredibly high-handed customer behaviour which creates the dramatic space for Leo's own personal life to be revealed. Now, of course, the thought experiment here can't be avoided. What if the gender roles were reversed? What if it were, say, Bill Nye, playing a nice, humorous, older guy paying for sex with a younger woman played by a less well-known female actor of colour? Would this tilt the tone, even the genre of the film, towards something darker and expose the realities of bought sex which were there all along? Yes, possibly. But none of this stops Leo Grand from being a highly entertaining and pertinent film with a terrific turn from Thompson. Ninja Thyberg's debut feature, Pleasure, is a bold, explicit film about a young Swedish woman called Linnea, played by newcomer Sophia Kappel, who changes her name to Bella Cherry and comes to LA, intent on following her dream to make it big in the adult movie industry. I'm gonna take over this shit. Do you want to see anything else in LA besides a porn set? No. What really drew you out here? Because this is a long way from home. Hello? Him. I'm just out here because I want to fuck. This is your life, Linnea. You book without agent? You're the one in charge. What if I would do it for free? And when you really want something. You can do anything. Pleasure is a smart, well-acted film with a particularly good performance from the real-life adult movie performer Zelda Morrison, playing Bella's best friend Joy, and perhaps the only person in the whole industry with a sense of humour. There have been some great, or at any rate interesting, films about the porn industry, of course, such as Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights from 1997, to Paul Schrader's underrated The Canyons from 2013. And I would also incidentally make a case for Michael Powell's 1959 film Peeping Tom being at least tangentially about porn. Pleasure has been widely praised for, among other things, of course, its honesty. Now, 
Although I wouldn't disagree with that at all, I would say that the only film that's ever totally honest about porn is a porn film. This drama is, like so many with a comparable theme, let's face it, trying to be sexy to some extent, in a way not all that dissimilar to a porn film. Trying to hitch a free ride on the dark mystique of porn, trying to siphon off some of porn's dark anti-glamour, especially as some of its intent is avowedly to be sex positive and even porn positive in the contemporary style. Pleasure has a feminist perspective. It is very candid about the realities of the adult film industry because despite the incessant emphasis on consent, on the female performers being conscientiously asked if they understand what is about to happen in the scene and if they agree to it, Pleasure shows that if they do actually try to say no at the last moment, things can get very difficult indeed. And despite the existence of some female porn directors, it is an overwhelmingly male-run business and the power relations of porn are the same as they ever were. And this, although admirably hard-headed, does mean that pleasure maybe doesn't exactly offer an obvious alternative to the traditional moralistic warning that comes with this territory. However, it's a superbly shot and, paradoxical though this sounds, very elegant film. So that's it. Please give this vlog a like and a share on social media. Please do the right thing for the umpteenth time in your blameless life and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And don't be what I call one of the non-subscribers. The people who think that it's somehow big and clever and fashionable not to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Because if you're one of these people, well then, in the immortal words of the late, great Philip Baker Hall in Seinfeld, I've got a flash for you, joy boy. That's not cool. Also, please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, a collection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian. That's it. See you next week.